Hi all, welcome back. Today I am here with another interesting topic for discussion. A lot of my friends ask me about this transportation problem. So today we are going to study more about transportation problem, how to solve a transportation problem. Before that, what is the purpose of transportation? In business way, we need to transport products even it is semi-finished or fully finished or raw materials from one place to another. It may be from one factory to another factory, factory to warehouse, factory to retail shops, wholesale shops, etc. The products need to be transported from one place to another. So for this, we have to evaluate the transportation cost. For evaluating the transportation cost, this transportation problem is done. Okay. For doing this transportation problem, we need mainly three informations. That are, one is destination of the supply, second is origin of the supply, and finally, unit cost of the product. Mainly, this transportation problem is done by using three methods. First one is Northwest Corner Rule. Second is Least Cost Method. And finally, Ogre's Approximation Method. The most common used one is Northwest Corner Rule Method. So today, we are going to study this transportation problem with North-West Corner Rule. So we can look directly to the problem part. Solve the transportation problem by North-West Corner Method. Here up to this much is the question part. Okay, This much is the question part. So we have to evaluate the problem. The first one is just look. The supply part and demand part are the outer matrix part. The inner matrix part is this destination and origin part. Okay. So we have to look what matrix is this. Okay. So we can draw a matrix there and we have to rewrite the quotient part in the first matrix. That is the first part so just re i had rewritten the question part here just look 274 here also 274 331 331 547 162 and all the outer part also i had mentioned there and the very important one thing is don't forget to write these things this destination d1 d2 d3 origin 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 demand supply don't forget to write those things in the answering part okay let's do the problem here we had written like this and how we have to solve this we can look the first thing we have to look is just look the supply part and the demand part here which one is the least one seven nine eight 5, 8, 7, 14. Which is the least one? Yes. Here the least one is 5. And we are solving the problem using Northwest Corner Rule. According to this method, we have to select the lowest one. Here we had selected 5. And we have to drag this lowest one to the northwest corner area this is the northwest corner area okay so we had rewritten this here five and one more thing we have to do from the concerned column we have to subtract this figure so seven minus five which is equal to two just draw a bracket here and write this. 
okay this is the first step and we have to exhaust this row the concerned row we have to exhaust this is the first step second step is now how much matrix is remaining here we are remaining a 3 into 3 matrix right so we have to redraw the matrix here here it is a 3 into 3 matrix and the important thing we have to note is just I already told don't forget to write this area just look there d1 d2 and d3 we had exhausted the first row so o one is not there now o2 o3 o4 okay now write all other figures 331 547 162 okay also the first row is exhausted so 8 7 14 now here here it is not 7 now 7 minus 5 it is 2 so 2 9 8 again the step is repeated that is just evaluate the supply part and demand part which is the lowest value here the, which is the least value here 2 right just take this 2 2 is the least value 1 and northwest corner rule is just take it to the northwest part here so 2 is written here so from that concerned row we have to minus this 2 8 minus 2 which is equal to 6 okay and now we have to exhaust this concerned column so from where we are taking the least number that concerned column or row is exhausted so we can write which matrix is left now d1 is exhausted so the remaining matrix is d2 d3 here o2 o3 o4 it should be very clear don't write o1 o2 o3 when we are writing very fast and furious in the examination this part is majorly missed so the entire problem will be collapsed so don't do so be very cautious in doing this part rewrite it 3 1 4 7 6 2 now here it is 9 8 here now it is 8 minus 2 6 okay so 6 7 14 so this is our new matrix again the problem is repeated here just look 9 8 14 7 6 which one is the least one yes 6 is the least one so take it here 6 has been taken here what is the next step yes from that conjunct column we have to minus it so 9 minus 6 it is 3 okay this particular row is exhausted now okay so what we have to do again redraw a matrix right so a 2 into 2 matrix is remaining d2 is there d3 is there which one has gone o2 has gone so remaining is o3 o4 o3 o4 is there 4 7 4 7 6 2 okay now the remaining part 7 14 it is not 9 now it is 9 minus 6 3 okay 3 8 this is the fourth stage we had got and let's move to a final stage again here which is the smallest one 3 okay so 3 has been taken to the north west area 3 has taken here so what next we have to do 
7 minus 3, right? 7 minus 3, which is equal to 4. Now, we have to exhaust this particular column. What is left there? We can write in another matrix, okay? The left part is D3. D3 is left here. O3, O4. O3, O4. 7, 2, 8, 14. The remaining is 4. We had got a matrix like this. This is the final matrix. And here we can write 4 here. 14 here nothing to move so up to this we have to do this is the last part of a particular problem this is the last fifth method and now the next step we have to redraw the first matrix okay so we can redraw the first matrix again so we had reached till the last part the next step is redraw the first matrix, okay? Just look at the question or just look at our first part and redraw the first matrix. And we are moving to the conclusion. The thing we have to do is just mark all this item within the column in this part also. So here in the D1, O1 area there is a 5 right 5 okay now in the second step in the D1 O2 area there is a 2 D1 O2 area we had a 2 okay again in the third step in the D2 O2 area we had a 6 D2 O2 area we had 6 again in the D2 O3 area we had a 3 D2 O3 area 3 and the last one here D3 O3 we had 4 D3 O4 we have 14 so D3 O3 D3, O3, we had 4. D3, O4, we have 14. So, I think you had understand why I had told to mark all this thing very correctly with a cautious mind. Okay. At the final step of the problem, these things help us a lot. When this is changed, the entire problem, the entire problem will be collapsed. So, this should be very clear. And now, we had lot some of the figures within the bracket in this matrix. The method for calculating the transportation cost is total transportation cost. Total transportation cost is equal to here just look 5 into 2 5 into 2 plus 2 into 3 2 into 3 plus 6 into 3 6 into 3 plus 3 into 4 plus 4 into 7 plus 14 into 2. The concerned bracket item is multiplied with the concerned matrix item. Just like that, all the figures is multiplied and added. And now we had got the transportation cost. Here it is 1, not 2 rupees. So this is the transportation problem done with the help of Northwest Corner Road. 
I had I think you are very clear about this this is about the transportation problem with the help of Northwest Corner Rule so next day I will come up with another interesting topic anyway I am trying a lot of blackboard mode next time we can come with another presentation mode till then bye